Hola amigos. I am in Costa Rica. This morning we are going on a cool adventure. We're going to go over there to the Osa Peninsula and we're going to see if we can find one of the rarest snakes on the planet, the black-headed Bushmaster. I've seen three before in my life. Oh yes, there he is. There he is. Despite looking many times, I didn't see my next Bushmaster until 2019. The third Bushmaster I saw was just up the road from us in South Carolina at the Serpent Center. We're going to be going with a project called the Melanocephala Project. We left uh, Golfito, which is about an hour and a half away from where I am now, and it's a beautiful day. And let's just hope the weather holds because you just never know what's going to happen uh, during the rainy season. In fact, rain damage like this actually delayed my trip but it did start raining as soon as I started seeing signs for the Melanocephala project. And it continued to rain as I got to the Bushmaster Project headquarters. The scientific name of the black-headed Bushmaster is Lachesis melanocephala. And melano means black and cephala means head, so it's the black-headed Bushmaster, Melanocephala, which gives its name to the project, and all they do is monitor the black-headed Bushmasters. Lachesis is the genus, the genus name for all the other Bushmasters in the world. I say Lachesis, some people say Lachesis, like it's spelled, but in reality, nobody knows. While waiting for the rain to stop, we had a chance to look at some of the equipment that has been used over the years to monitor the Bushmaster snakes. And unfortunately, they had this Bushmaster, which had been hit by a car. Eventually, the rain slowed down enough that we were able to go out and try to find a black-headed Bushmaster. Along the way, we saw another rare snake. This is the white-tailed hognose viper, Porthidium parasi. About five minutes up the trail, the rain started coming down harder, and it was really hard to record sound, but we did see the black-headed Bushmaster. As you can see, the camouflage on this snake is absolutely incredible. Despite being rare, one of the things that makes these snakes very hard to find is the fact that they live on very steep hillsides, making for very unpleasant hiking conditions. The head of this Bushmaster was pointed away from us, but you can see it there in that graphic. The Melanocephala Project does a great job at monitoring these snakes and they require visitors to maintain a safe distance away from the Bushmaster as not to disturb them. That night we went out looking for snakes and we found this beautiful drab tree frog. This was a cool water animal. They of course go into water and hold their breath with a, a bubble in which they breathe from. This is the granular poison dart frog. Sometimes they're called strawberry frogs. What a beauty. Well, we looked our eyes out and despite having six good snake eyes, we couldn't find the first snake. Not sure exactly what happened. I think perhaps the severe rain had something to do with it. The next morning I headed back to Golfito and surprisingly, they had completed some repairs to the road. Well, right in the center there, you can see that there is a snake up there. I'm going to try to zoom in, see what we can see on it. I'm going to guess it's a bird-eating snake. Really hard to say from this angle. But, at least we're on the scoreboard here at the Ocho Verde property. Very cool. I did get a little glint of eye shine. Uh, the other snake it could be is the black-tailed boa, also known as the mangrove 
boa, the Corallus Russian bergii. Could be what it is for sure. One of the two. Well, we got a house snake. Look at that little guy. I'm gonna go get a better light, huh? This is a cat-eyed snake, of course. This is the uh, common cat-eyed snake here. It's the uh, Leptodira uh, ornata. I think that's what it's called now. Anyway, we're gonna let it do its thing. It's probably gonna go under this piece of furniture right here, live in it. Huh, how cool is that, a house snake? Well, it's taken about 10 days before I could find a blunthead tree snake. This is a baby, of course. I'm just heading back to the house because it's kind of rainy out. My glasses are getting all messed up. It's been so weird with all the rain that we've had. But look at that beauty. I'll give you an idea how thin it is. There's my hand. Anyway, we're just going to let it go and not mess with it. All right. See that little white head right there? This is a Nilius scladderi, or an Inuliothus scladderi, which is one of the glass tail snakes. You can see it's pretty shiny right here. And there's its head right there. They're non-venomous, of course, but I haven't seen one in quite a few years here, so I'm glad to be able to see it. Look at that guy. It's really unusual to see a white-headed snake. This will give you an idea of how difficult it is to see from like four feet off the ground. And I'm like closer to six feet, at least that's where my eyes are. And right there is the head. Very cool. We're not going to mess with it. We'll just leave it and go on our way. Another bunch of tree snake. Of course, this is our second one that we found. Good to see you, little fella. That's really amazing how much this looks like a snake. Wow. Amazing. There's several of them. Part of a palm tree. So I woke up this morning and I looked up in my skylight and this is snake skin. So we'll have to check it out and see what kind it is. All right, I know what this snake is. We're gonna take a look at it with a better camera though. All right, so this snake skin is gonna be fairly easy to identify. First of all, I noticed that this is a standard SD card and it's a standard AA battery. One thing that stands out about this snake skin is the huge scales. So if we take a, uh, one of these T-square measuring devices, you can see that the scale is about one quarter inch and that's huge. That means that this is very likely one of the Chironius species, which is uh, a keelback snake or a whip snake as sometimes they're called here. But this is probably the ebony keelback Chironius grandisquamus. It also could be the Chironius flavopictus, but I believe it's the grandisquamus because, squamous because of these large diamond shaped scales. I'll have to do a count to really get a more accurate evaluation of the skin. I counted the scales and there are 10 scales. Only 10 scales across the body. That's huge for a snake. Got a little day snake here. Let's see him going that way. One of the racers, I believe. Well, he disappeared into a hole. See, there's my camera. Trail camera, of course. And then on this tree right here, baby blunthead tree snake. Let's sneak around to the other side and see if we can get a closer look. Very cool. Hunting lizards, sleepy lizards. All right. It is our last night here. 
And we saw a big puma on the trail camera earlier today. I was not eaten by the puma. All right, we have the first salamander. It's the Allen's worm salamander. This is what they do. They kind of climb up on plants and hang out during the night, maybe catch a bug or something. I think these are mating grab tree frogs. Let's see how much bigger the female is than the male. Turnip tail gecko in that walking palm tree. It's smoking jungle frog. The female basilisk lizard. A common parakeet here. This is a ground bird. This is the helmeted basilisk. The brown basilisk. Here's a little critter hunt. It's a poison dart frog. One of the tropical animals. Oh, she's fat looking too. These don't really change color too much. In fact, I've only ever seen them green. Rosy wolf snail. This is from a t-shirt I got about 10 years ago from the Orient Society. And they were actually in charge of the one of the first Bushmaster projects in Costa Rica. If you'd like to go down and see the black-headed Bushmaster, you can go to Facebook through the Melanocephala project, and they can hook you up with accommodations, food, anything you need, and you can also reach out through CR Wild.